Welcome to another episode of Car Addiction. Today I'm going to talk about clutch plates. If this is your first time in my channel, I'm a huge Nissan enthusiast. I have one, two, three, three hundred ZX Twin Turbo, R32 Skyline, uh, a Nissan Xterra, possessed by the demon himself, and then I don't know why I have an MR2 and a Porsche 944. If you are 21 and younger, stop, watch a cat video, talk to a female, do anything else. Do not be a car enthusiast because it is absolutely detrimental to your financial health. And if you can ignore my son yapping away in the background, let's get started with the clutch plate. So the clutch plate is that dinner plate looking thing that transfers the power from your engine to the transmission. It has friction materials all over it and the spinny thing in the motor and the transmission. This is the medium where it will grab to the spinny thing and transfer the, the torque and the power from the motor to the transmission, which it will transfer the power to the diff, to your tire, you go forward in life unless you're a car enthusiast where you keep making bad financial decisions and you go reverse in your financial career when it comes to clutch plate you're going to hear a lot of things about like oem stage one stage two stage three stage four stage five multi-plate there's so many different options out there i'm a noob in this scenario but let me try my best to explain all the different stages and the differences and whatnot so that i can probably help you to make a better decision in choosing the next clutch for your daily driver or performance or a weekend vehicle so first is the OEM clutch plate it basically means whatever comes with your car and there's nothing really to talk about it they are very uh, daily driver friendly they're soft they're nice engaging blah 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 but also you have to understand the automaker designs a clutch plate based on the power of the vehicle and the comfort level and a bunch of other factors that they want to cater to so that's that and then let's talk about a stage one. A stage one clutch plate will be very similar to how an OEM clutch plate is, and usually OEM clutch plates are ma made of some sort of an organic material. A stage one clutch plate will also be made of, of some sort of organic material, but it will be a, a little different, little tweaked, so all it will allow you is to a higher grab force. So in return, what happens is it allows you to uh, have a little higher torque rating than a, uh, an OEM uh, clutch plate would, would be. And when it comes to the life expectancy of these clutch plates, they're very similar. Um, they drive very uh, similarly, very comfortable. Uh, a lot of the time, I would suggest people to go with stage one uh, over an OEM because even when it comes to the price point of it, they're very, very similar and you just get a better torque out of it. That's that. From now on, it gets interesting. Let's talk about stage two. So stage two clutch plate has a bunch of different variables attached to it. So some companies, will call a stage two and then a stage two plus. All of these clutch plates are arbitrarily declared by the company they're making these products. So let's say an SAT or spec or X80 clutch, do not buy an X80 clutch, watch the link. We'll call, which call their specific clutches X, Y, Z, but it has nothing to do with what a, a stage one, stage two, or stage three would be because they decided to call whatever they wanna call. It's their company, their product, you pay for it. So, but typically, a stage two clutch would have a higher, more aggressive uh, friction material, which can grab to the flywheel a, a more vigorous way. And it will also come with a higher pressure plate. What is a pressure plate? So when we talk about this uh, dinner plate to your engine and your engine is spinning, and if you just put this dinner plate with your engine, it, nothing's, it will do nothing unless you put some pressure in it so that this friction material can grab to the, the motion of the flywheel and then transfer the energy from your engine to the transmission. That's where a pressure plate comes in. A, pres a pressure plate comes with X amount of force that will that if this it will put pressure on the dinner plate to attach to the flywheel. I just talked about flywheel. What is a flywheel? Flywheel is basically a bigger dinner plate which is attached to the motor. And the flywheel, every time the motor spins or does a revolution, because the flywheel is attached to the motor, it spins all the time, regardless of the dinner plate clutch I gotta get my wording straight clutch being attached to the flywheel or not it always spins and you engage or disengage the clutch by using your clutch paddle if your clutch paddle is down your clutch your clutch is disengaged if your clutch paddle is up your clutch is engaged I hope I'm not confusing any of you so going back to the stage 2 a stage 2 clutch will always come with a stronger pressure plate which can hold 
the, the clutch to the flywheel harder, which will result in a higher torque number. So if you're modifying your car with a little bit more power gain, it's always recommended to go with stage two clutch because you still have some of the drivability of an OEM clutch, but what you get is a lot more power handling capability out of a stage two clutch over a stage one or an OEM. In certain applications, let's say if you're over 25 or 30% more torque than your uh, OEM spec and OEM clutch will not survive. Even a stage one may not survive. A stage two, that's where it should be. And then there is a stage two plus, uh, stage three, I'm just not gonna talk about it because uh, there are a lot of companies, they will call them in different variables, but all it is is what they do is they play with uh, the friction materials, different grades of friction materials, and with the clutch pressure plate. Each company has their own way of talking about it, and uh, each company calls it a different way. The next is stage four. This is where things become very, very interesting. Stage four clutch does not even look like a clutch. It looks like this. So a standard clutch, it's supposed to come with a full face and you're gonna see a stage four clutch will have a multi-piece. Usually they start with six pucks, so six different pucks. Another thing you're gonna, going to notice is, uh, let's say this clutch that I'm holding in my hand. This has a solid face. An OEM clutch will have a middle place which is sprung loaded. So what the difference between an OEM clutch and this clutch is, when the clutch grabs the, the flywheel, some of these forces and chatter is absorbed by the spring which is holding the clutch. That way you get a smoother engagement. But when you come to this section where it is a solid piece, it's on or off, on or off. So your daily drivability, um, stop, stop light to stop light or some sort of a, uh, what do you call it, uh, traffic jam goes through the window you start hating yourself little by little and also same thing with a stage four six pot clutch yes some of these stage four clutches will come with a strong weight which i highly recommend going over one of these flat face solid disc because all you are going to do is you're going to thank yourself and you will have a little bit more daily drivability than a complete stage four clutch because every time you come to a stop slide with a stage four clutch you hate yourself, you curse, you curse everybody else, you curse the slow drivers in front of you, uh, you stall, uh, driveline chatter, um, man. So your boy, in my infinite wisdom, I went with the stage 4 clutch in my 300ZX. And since the day, I regret, absolutely regret doing it because I don't track it, I don't drag it. Uh, I go for cruises, I go for spirited runs, and uh, sometimes I go out to do grocery, you know. So all of these applications that I talked about, a stage four clutch is terrible. And one thing I also skipped is a lightweight flywheel, which I also have. Uh, what is a lightweight flywheel is? A stock flywheel is a full face flywheel and it has its own mass. So what happens is when you disengage the clutch, the flywheel keeps spinning. So it helps the, the engine to keep up with the rev. Whereas a lightweight flywheel, because it has less weight in it, when you disengage the clutch, the engine revs drop significantly. Um, there's two there's a benefit to it because it has less weight to it It revs faster and drops faster because it revs faster you free up some horsepower uh, From the motor, but because it drops faster between the gear shift It's a little harsh and if you have a stage 4 clutch in it. It makes it very freaking interesting. Yeah Yeah All right, well Later on this video, I will go for a drive and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Every time you go through gear shift, even in your highway cruising speed, let's say going from 4th to 5th, you get a whiplash because it just grabs so hard, so fast, and it is terrible. I let a younger viewer of mine drive my Tiana ZX. It was a bad idea, but because he was enthusiastic and I, and I also know he knows how to drive a 5-speed manual, so I let him do it anyway. Just to get out of my driveway, he stalled the car three times and then I told him, Let's give up on this one. I will show you how to drive it. Anyway, that's stage four and my frustration for you. Next is stage five. A stage five clutch is usually, instead of six puck, is a four puck with a Kevlar kind of material in it. It is very aggressive, or sometimes they would come in a three puck. Again, it's a Kevlar material. There is no smoothly engaging or not. It is engages or disengages. There is no drawback in it. It clamps or doesn't clamp. Unless you are running a high horsepower vehicle, you are on a track, you are doing lunch controls, stuff like that, that clutch is not recommended. It is absolutely terrible clutch to daily drive. And on the other hand, all of the stage four and stage five clutches has very short lifespan. Because of this aggressive nature of it, they wear out themselves very fast.
on that regard, a stage OEM stage one and stage two clutch is a very is a lot better option to go with if you want some longevity and uh, daily drivability out of your vehicle. After stage five, you have to go to a multi-disc application. In a multi-disc application, instead of one flywheel, one dinner plate clutch, there will be one flywheel, one clutch, a middle disc, and a second clutch and a pressure plate. So there will be two clutches inside one clutch assembly and sometimes they can go up to four clutches. So uh, there are a lot of companies uh, making these multi-clutch systems. Um, they are very complicated and very, very expensive. They would start from $1,000 to all the way to five, $6,000 and some can go more. All right, let's go on a drive in my 20ZX and show you how I hate my life every time I come to a stop sign. All right, I hope it records this time. I did a full recording, nothing recorded. All right, so starting from the zero. Starting from the bottom, now we're here. It's just painful every time you get into the first gear and try to get out of it, so first. Because there's nothing you can do, you know. In a regular clutch system, you rev and slowly release the clutch and this one you hold your rev around 15 to 2000 and then just kind of dump the clutch that's the only way so every time you go to a red light it's painful every time you're stuck in traffic it's painful i got used to it because i've been driving like this for the last four or five months quite a bit it's not that bad when you're in a roll which i just did but if you have to come to a complete stop every time oh. and then when you let go of the gas and the engine brakes naturally and because the grab on this clutch is so hard it almost feels like you stepped on the brake and you know you go forward the gear shift if you're in if you're not rev matching or if your engine rpm and your drive rpm is not the same when you engage the clutch you could you get a whiplash same with downshifts but downshifts are a lot more uh, uh, forgivable let's put it that way so i rev to 2000 dump the clutch and then hopefully i don't stall and every time it makes this noise and then sometimes when I'm pulling in uh, and first and second it has this drive light chatter coming to another red light Specifically, taking a left turn is tricky. If you're in a movement, hopefully I will be right now. It is easy, but I have to stop. I have to come to a complete stop. Pulling out of it, hopefully I don't stall it. Ah, oh, almost, almost stalled it. Well, fellas, that's it. Uh, Thank you for making it to the end of the video and don't be me. Do your research on the clutch system that you're looking for and hopefully you will make the right decision. Hit the subscribe button and bell notification. A lot more content coming in.